Brock. His name rhymes with rock. And that's the kind of shit he likes. That and the ladies. Seriously, this guy just can't get enough. I mean, dudes and lesbians. Anyone really who's into some of that sweet Officer Jenny, if you know what I mean. Wink, wink. But Brock here never seems to pull it off. Homie just can't get a break. If you had half of the determination of this guy, you'd be rolling in the joy. A man with his eyes wide shut, Brock is one of the most consistent and well-loved characters from the culturally explosive Pokemon anime. This guy rocked out 13 seasons of that show and still comes back from time to time to shed a little love on some hot ash. For most of us in the Americas and Europe, Pokemon was our first foray into anime in Japan's very different style of comedy. She can violate my rights. Hey! More on that later, but for now, let us bask in the greatness of this legend and his giant rock snake. A dude whose passion lies in the geo and the pants. A deviant who loves a lady in uniform. A true blue perv who specializes in the day game. A figure without whom we would have no Pokemons, cause Ash and Misty would have gotten lost and died in the woods somewhere. But is there more to him than this? Is there something underneath this sleepy-eyed Tepig Slinger's comical exterior that we've been missing all along? Something that could explain his insatiable thirst for some hot cloister. Well, that's why we're here! On the surface, Brock may seem as if he's only out to snorkel for some clam pearl, but on the inside, that's where things get juicy! So come along with me as we search through the velvety folds of Brock's brain to find what makes the turgid rock master so hard to figure out, to find the gooey center of this hot chocolate Tootsie Pop. Because somewhere inside us all, there is a simple truth waiting to be discovered. This one just happens to be Brock's truth, the real truth. Brock is a character of simple design. You take a little Naruto, some Jin Ichimaru, and sprinkle on some Lando Calrissian, and boom, you got Brock. In the Pokemon games, he's simply the first gym leader you steamroll on your path to glory, but in the anime, Brock is not only the leader of the Pewter City Rock-type gym, but he's a main character and friend of Ash and Misty. He's also the best character, aside from maybe James. Let's boogie! Regardless, if it wasn't for Brock, there wouldn't be much of a show. See, Ash and Misty are both pretty young, and really stupid. Neither one of them can navigate their way out of a cardboard box. Especially Ash, but we've covered that. We're here for Brock, so let's start from the beginning. We meet Brock in episode 5 of the anime. At first, he seems like a real hard ass, and he beats Ash's stupid Pokemon into the dirt right away. However, we learn more about his backstory quickly when Ash runs into Brock's dad. Disguised as a dude who looks like he drives a white van around giving out candy, Brock's dad, Flint, 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 it's a rock joke. Another rock joke, because Flint is a stone. Nice. Anyway, Flint reveals that he left his family to become a Pokemon trainer. This, in turn, left Brock to take care of everything in his steed. These responsibilities included maintaining the Pewter City Gym and raising and caring for his ten brothers and sisters all by himself. It isn't said exactly when Flint left, but we can assume he's been gone for a long time. Brock is 15 during the show, which means Brock couldn't have been much older than a preteen when he had to find a way to financially support a household as well as feed himself and 10 other kids. Maybe Pokemon gyms are a lucrative business, but that's still an insane amount of pressure to put on a young person. I can barely take care of myself, let alone 10 other people. But during his time taking care of his siblings, Brock not only figured out how to maintain a business and balance a budget for 11, but also cook clean and sew. He was like a single mother, washing and drying. And speaking of mothers, during this exposition we also learn that Brock's mother is dead. But again, more on that later. What we're left with when all is said and done is a 15 year old kid living like a middle aged adult with a family. Someone who not only dealt with crushing responsibility, but also the death of a mother and abandonment from a father. As far as Brock was concerned, all of his hopes and dreams were going to be taking a permanent backseat to the things that he had to do. At least until his deadbeat dad showed back up and took over the gym again. After years of being a failure, Flint finally decides to come back to allow Brock to go on his own Pokemon journey. And without a single second of contemplation, Brock hands him a list of things he needs to know about the kids and leaves. I mean, I would too, but that's pretty hilarious. Bye kids, good luck with your dad and stuff, you'll be fine. After being liberated by Ash, Brock clearly feels like he owes the kids some kind of Wookiee life debt cause he sticks around with that idiot for way too long. Do you know how many broken bridges and pitfalls Brock walked into because of Ash?
Though perhaps at this point, this is just what Brock knew how to do best. Take care of stupid little kids. Throughout their journeys, it was always Brock who cooked the food, set up camp, carried the maps, and was the voice of reason when arguments broke out between Ash and Misty, who honestly just need to bang it out already. Brock took care of the Pokemon and provided the medicine. He even coached Ash through some of his toughest battles. On the surface, Brock seems like a pretty good catch. If I was of the man me persuasion, Brock would be pretty high on my waifu list. Alas, we can only dream. Honestly, Brock seems like a really good dude. Well, that is until he gets a whiff of the ladies. All of Brock's positive personality traits never get to shine when it comes to the Nurse Joys and Officer Jennies of the world. Huh? Brock's so good looking. And he's so talented! Or really any other woman besides Misty. You see, Brock has some serious inner demons that come out when he's around women and his personality completely changes. Besides becoming the best Pokemon breeder in the world, which I mean also has to do with sex, but I'm not touching that one, Brock just wants to find a girlfriend. And he's so desperate to do so that he goes all sex nuts and starts babbling like, like, I don't know, like Ash trying to win a Pokemon battle. However, Brock's naughty desires seem very directed, if you know what I mean. Let me break it down for you. Brock always has a female partner as well, generally some chick who has a boner for Ash. Despite being around them all the time, Brock never shows any interest in the slightest. Instead, it's made pretty obvious that Brock is looking for a woman, or at least someone older than him. Officer Jenny, Nurse Joy, this ghost lady, Pokemon groomer chick, the biker punk with the green hair, sometimes Jesse. Jesse looks pretty good in that uniform too. You get the point. Perhaps what it comes down to is Brock fitting under the totally scientific classification of boob guy. But I think it's something a little bit more messed up. Though if you doubt this is the real truth, I invite you to fight me, bro, cause look at how jealous Misty Dawn and May's little brother get when Brock starts getting all drooly over some rando. They're totally using protect for his Arbok, if you know what it is that I'm saying. Nice. But let's take a step back toward the root of the problem. You may remember earlier when Flint said Brock's mom is dead. Well, guess what? She's not. In 2006, a little offshoot of the Pokemon anime briefly got airing in the States, and in episode 5, Brock goes home from his adventures in Johto to find that his mother, Lola, has returned. Not only that, but she's taken over the Pewter City gym and turned it into a water type gym. And we know we don't need two of those in Kanto! Goddamn starving piece of sh Anyway, Brock gets really triggered and forces his dad to battle his mom on terms that the gym will change back to a rock type center if she loses. But Flint is a rock type user and Lola is a water type type user. Naturally, Flint gets his ass kicked, but he and Lola reconcile their love. Unimpressed, Brock notices his brother, Forrest, is upset about the change to the gym and promises to win it back. You know, for the rocks. Big, beautiful rocks. People used to drive those babies for miles. Needless to say, Brock wins back the gym and sets off to Hoenn with his messed up family in the rearview mirror. So in review, we have a 15 year old obsessed with strong, mature women. He has a knack for being a caretaker and it's his dream to become a Pokemon breeder and eventually a Pokemon doctor. As a child, he was abandoned by his father and mother who was presumed dead for who knows how long and left to take care of his 10 brothers and sisters and maintain the family business all by himself. Whoa, hold up, red flags everywhere. Can you not see it yet? Brock is a classic case. According to one of the most trusted sites on the internet, urbandictionary.com, Brock has a serious case of mommy issues. A dangerous condition, mommy issues can be described as issues that arise when somebody's mother is an absolute cool cat and does not give them the care they require throughout childhood. Guys with mommy issues usually turn out to be players and seek women's affection through sex and have a bad image of women. Or think they want a girlfriend or wife, but really want a girl to act like their mommy. If this isn't Brock in a CDOT shell, then I don't know what is. However, that's not it. Brock has a dual prognosis. Trust me, I'm a doctor. On top of his horrible mommy issues, Brock also has... <laughs> DADDY ISSUES! <laughs> like mommy issues, daddy issues arrive from having a shitty neglectful father. Though commonly thought to be a female-only problem, research has shown that men are also equally inflicted by these daddy-induced problems. 
Daddy issues can be described as a condition brought on by a woman or man having a lack of or abusive relationship with his or her father. This results in a lack of self-confidence, clinginess, whininess, inability to cope with one's own bullshit, and generally being an all-around cool cat. Some other symptoms may include needing a partner to feel like a whole person, seeking validation through someone else's genitals, asking to be spanked, Seeking partners who are older or have more money than you. Enjoying being put down or shamed. Getting more than one STD. Chronic masturbation. And being a f <laughs> boy. Now, all joking and urban dictionarying aside, mommy and daddy issues are actually a real thing, though not in name. Generally, what it boils down to is the idea of neglect. Neglect is a horrible and traumatic issue many children face across the world and can result in some long-lasting social and emotional side effects. It's a domestic issue that is heavily punished by the Department of Social Services, at least in the United States. When a child is proven to be neglected, DSS will often go as far as to remove that child from the custody of their parents. The ordeals that Brock went through as a child, being abandoned, being left in charge of his siblings, can personally alter someone's outlook on life and society. On the surface, it seems like Brock stepped up and succeeded in keeping his household together, but on the inside, he was probably scared and lonely. It's not like he could talk to his younger brothers and sisters about what he was going through. Deep down, all Brock really wanted was for someone to take care of him so he could relax and feel like a kid is supposed to. Unfortunately, a lot of emotional issues become cyclical in nature, and even though Brock was freed by his dad coming back, he stuck with Ash and Misty, once again becoming a caregiver because that's all he really knew. Brock states many times that all he wants is a girlfriend, but what he really wants is for someone to fill the hole that his parents left him. He needs someone to always be there for him, someone to take care of him, someone he can depend on when he feels like he can't do everything. However, even if Brock got his wish, it's impossible for anyone to be what Brock wants, because he has no concept of normality. He expects that perfect is normal, but nobody is perfect. When people throw around the terms mommy or daddy issues, generally what they're describing is someone who is desperate for affection because they never had any. People who come off way too strong because they have unrealistic expectations of others. Spending that much time alone and in your own head, creating a dream where you could be happy, and then going out and trying to make that dream a reality is futile and ends up with you getting hurt, somebody else getting hurt, or both. It's important to understand that everyone and everything is flawed, and that's what normal really is. Unfortunately, Brock can't do that yet, so he gets a lot of this. <laughs> Regardless, it's important to understand that people come from all walks of life, and just because you see them a certain way doesn't mean you're necessarily right. Brock is a really good guy, someone who was strong enough to step up and essentially save his family. He cares deeply about people and Pokemon, despite the neglect his caregivers showed him. Sure he hasn't figured it all out yet, but has anyone? Anyway, that's the real truth about Brock Harrison. That's right, you heard me, apparently his last name's Harrison. Can I get some verification down in the comments? Either way, if you like this video and want to see more of this, hit that like button and subscribe. As you guys might have heard in the update video, we're releasing shows now, so if you want to see more of me, check out the real truth. We've done some pretty cool episodes on getting over it with Bennett Foddy and Doki Doki Literature Club and we're gonna be giving you guys a bunch more soon. So go check it out! Anyways, I'm Ryan and I'll catch y'all next time! Toodles!